All right, here we are, episode four. I'm adding another word, pipette. Yeah, well, so we learned that I was wrong about pipette. <laughs> I was like 10% wrong. He was 95.7% <laughs> wrong. I like that you're so excited about this. Uh, so, uh, go look up what an actual pipette no, is. No, it's four. Move on. What are we doing? We got whiskey. All right, so this is Writer's Tears, The Redhead. Mm. And that's more of a Scottish accent, more doing Irish whiskey, but yeah. whatever. Um, so, the difference in theory is that this was aged in sherry casks, giving it what they call a ruby red hue, which I find to be mildly bullshit. It's, uh, it's more of a ginger. Yeah. <laughs> more of a ginger. <laughs> okay, so, let's look at the color of this whiskey first. So, if you want to get really snobby about whiskey, and you want to be made fun of in a bar, then you can hold up, unless you're in a whiskey bar. You know I do. Then you can hold, <laughs> you can hold up your glass and do this little action to it. Now, there's no way, objectively, that that's ruby red. No. That's not a thing. That's apple juice. Yeah. So, marketing fails again. I like the red head uh, and the idea that it was aged in sherry casks. I think the name is great. I think you're supposed to hold this behind. <laughs> yeah, the red, the red cap. That's the only red thing in this entire experience. Um, I love the idea that the red head is communicating, hey, we're putting this in sherry, whereas before it was uh, bourbon, yeah. ex-bourbon yeah, casks. Yeah. Um, so what we're about to see is, what is a difference that in theory is only aging due to the same whiskey grain base? Okay. Right? I'm going to let you pay attention to that. I'm going to smell and drink the whiskey for free. No, you're already going to get it on the nose. This smells com like a completely different whiskey. Completely different? Yeah, because, I mean, you still have those Irish butter notes. But in there, there's a sort of cling. I always find that sherry cask whiskeys have a sort of clingy sweetness to them. And the smell? Yeah, and the smell and the taste. They smell like uh, like someone is wearing too much perfume, and it feels cloyingly like you can't get it out of your nose. I thought that was you. Yeah, that was that is me. I'm, I'm drinking. It. I thought you liked. <laughs> mm. More interesting? Yes. Okay. Yes. So what you just discovered is that if you change even a slight part of this whole process, yeah. you can create a completely new whiskey. Yeah, because the, the first two from this distillery, like they're re remarkably similar. I'm surprised mm -hmm. that they called them different. <laughs> um, but this is very obviously a new animal. And, um, hmm. Woo! Now it is 46%. Which could mean that the alcohol content is kind of contributing to the aggression. Yeah, it, it is um, a bit more biting. But beyond that, beyond the initial, it's yeah. not sharpness isn't the right word. No, right. no, I get more of a. So before in the Irish whiskeys, you get a lot. Normally, you'll get a lot of uh, green apple. Yeah, you get a lot of light uh, biscuit, butter biscuit notes. And this one, you get um, plums, dried fruits. That's yeah. what sherry, that's what happens when you put sherry. Uh, same thing happens in scotch. If you take a scotch and you end it in sherry casks, you end up with all these sort of dried fruit flavors. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's rare to find an Irish whiskey that contributes to that catalog. But uh, I like this one better than the so previous expressions. Yeah, it has more personality. So, if you like more complicated, interesting whiskeys, then the Writer's Tears Redhead is going to be your go-to from that distillery, I think. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the last one I have from Walsh. So we'll be leaving them behind tomorrow. Four? Man, <laughs> you want to go straight to Scotch. I do, right? come on. But I, so we're really going to work our way around the vault instead of in an orderly, nerdy fashion? What? Here, there... Through one zone at a time? <laughs> If you were going to insist on being <laughs> methodical and uh, anal and something as glorious as the vault. Uh, all right, fine. We'll just pick it random. Here's the thing. I will hit you if you pull out a spreadsheet <laughs> for what we're about to taste. Oh, uh, that's a note to self. <laughs> Delete spreadsheet that you built yesterday. That can be used as a weapon. Yeah. Well, I'm wearing it. <laughs> I'm bigger than you. This yeah. what happens when I lean forward to you. You're saying... No, no, no. Okay. So now you're bringing up the fact that... <laughs> that uh, wait, wait. You lean forward. I'll lean back. That Rex is roughly eight feet tall. No, oh, come on. And I'm seven uh, five. And I'm a more reasonable five eight. Perfectly normal for a hobbit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, uh, yeah. No, 5'8 is the average American height, which means you're a freakish giant. Mm. See, if I said anything, it would be un American, so you've cornered me. <laughs> <laughs> it is the way of my people. Yes. All right, well, till tomorrow, may your crazy stay this side of legal, and may you return to us before we have time to miss you. Cheers. Cheers.